to go back. So we are, in the past, we were able to launch Shenzhou 1 and Shenzhou 4. Just in front of us, so this is the re-entry capsule from Shenzhou 1. This is very treacherous objects. So when we come to 2003, the Shenzhou 5 carried astronaut Yang Liwei successfully entered into space. In the journal, he said he wrote to the peace and the progress of the human being, Chinese people is able to step off from the Earth and enter into the space. In 2005, Shenzhou 6 once again uh, complete the mission to stay in space. So all of these have made breakthroughs in the aerospace industry in China. And China, it is the third country that is able to send human beings to the space. And when we talk about the second step, so we also talk about we need people to be able to land in the space. And also we are able to stay in the outer space. Jai Zhigang is able to go to the space, and also we are able to put national flag in the space. On the left side, you could see this is the space suit worn by Jai Zhigang. And also on the right side, you could see it is the new generation of the space suit. From 2001 to 2007, Tiangong-1 aircraft is used to dock with Shenzhou-8 to Shenzhou-10. And for the Tiangong-2, it's able to dock with Shenzhou-11 and also the Tianzhou-1 cargo ship. And during the past few years, we are able to conduct the extravehicular activity and also we are able to do the rendezvous and the docking missions. At the same time, we are able to conduct a number of scientific experiments. We are able to complete the second task for our mission. As for our third strategy for the three-step development strategy, we need to build the space station. We are able to launch the Tiangong-1 Tiangong and also we are able to march to make a very solid step in building the space station. So if we look at this one, uh, the lens is about 16.6 meter and vertically it could accommodate like six stories of space. And in the future, we will send out the laboratory Wentian and the Mengtian to dock with Tiangong. By then, we will successfully complete the construction of the space station. So this is what we call the three-step strategy for aerospace industry in China. Even though we are lagging behind at the beginning, but right now we have already made notable progress. As we are seeing right now, we are achieving remarkable results. This is thanks to the efforts made by the taikonauts and the astronauts. For all of these astronauts, they have gone through a lot of trainings. It's not an easy task. I would like to ask all the students, have you ever experienced the feeling of microgravity? Do you want to share your experience with us? So I remember me that when we are taking an elevator and going up, so when the elevator stopped, it feels like we are getting lighter. So or when we are taking the elevator going down, we could also have a feeling of the microgravity. Very well said. Any other opinions? When I'm walking, sometimes I accidentally fall. Actually, at that time, I think this is also the experience of the microgravity. Yes, all the example can show what it feels like for the microgravity environment. But be careful when you're walking. Speaking of the microgravity environment, does that mean we don't have any gravity at all? Please raise your hand if you think 
When you are in a microgravity environment, the gravity completely disappears. I believe there are many opinions of you. So now we would like to talk about the microgravity environment. Each time when we are talking about the weightless environment, we always feel that we are getting lighter. It feels like we are floating. This is because uh, some of the active forces have been diminished. For example, when I put a book on the scale, so the scale is actually uh, supporting this book, and the weight is the same. So if we do not hold this scale anymore, what will happen? Now I would like to show you the experimental video. Now you can see if you look at the scale, and um, the scale comes back to zero, meaning that at this, in this case, the scale is not supporting the book. So if you are the book, how do you feel? I think the book is actually flying in the sky. So this is a complete microgravity environment. So if you raise the hand just now, I would like to say, even though you are in the microgravity environment, it does not mean the gravity completely disappears. So right now I would like to uh, show you another experiment. So I'd like my TA to bring the stuff to me and look at what I have. In my hand is a bottle of water. And I have made two holes, so that is why you can see the water coming from these two holes. So let's say if we drop it, then you will think the water is still coming from the holes, yes or no? All right, let's look at this. Three, two, one. Can you see it? Of course not, because it's really fast. And let's look at the slow motion. So this slow mo. So you can look at it very carefully. So we take our hands off, and you can see that there's no water coming out of that hole. Why? It's, this is a free fall motion, and the gravity actually is O transferred to that the acceleration for falling. It seems like that the book and the form scale. The form skill so the each other actually not pressing so that is why no water coming out of that hole so that's called complete weightless so there's an apple in my hand if I drop it it's also complete weightless 300 years ago there is a story that the tree fall from the apple fall from the tree and hit a person that person named Newton and Newton suddenly thought about why the apple actually fall to the ground, not flying to the sky, because of the gravitational attraction. So I believe that no matter where the water be a apple grows, that it always can fall to the same place. So following this, we find these laws or the gravitational, the universal gravitational. And we talk about the moon that also have that attractive force from the Earth. Right? And we talk about actually that's doing the uh, orbiting around the Earth, right? So I call my TA again. So you can see there's a rope, and I put the glass on the board of the glass, and like, like it make a circle, circular motion. So do you think the water will split out? Let's say. All right, look at this. No drop of water is coming out of that glass. So you're looking at this slow motion when it reached the peak, 
So it's still it's under the gravity, but no water coming out, because we talk about that actually need the forces, that's the centripetal force. So that the centripetal force keep it always making this circular motion. And that same logic applied to our lecturers in the China Space Station. So actually still doing these kind of circular motion and we talk about the gravitation or universal gravitation actually provide that centripetal force. So you could see that the orbits can keep circling the Earth in the same orbit. So that is kind of the knowledge of the weightlessness. So in today's lecture, we will see a lot of really spectacular miracles in the macrogravity in China Space Station. And so there are more to come. So give a warm applause to our lecturers in China Space Station. There is no end to unveil the mysteries of space. Hello to all. My name is Wang Yaping. I'm very glad to see all of you again. And today is our second class. So I invite the two other lecturers to say hi to you. Hello, class. My name is Jai Zhigong. My role today, I will be the cameraman. Hello, folks. My name is Ye Guangfu. I'm very glad to be part of the second lecture in space. In the previous class, we had a room tour here in China Space Station and show you a lot of very interesting experiments, a lot of really interesting scientific phenomena. I don't know whether you had a lot of studies after class, but I heard that see a lot of students actually quite interested in a, the, a fluid phenomenon in the macrogravity. And the last class, actually, I made a blue planet. And today, let me show you another miracle. Last month, we had Beijing 2022 Winter Olympic and the Paralympic Games, and we cheer for the a great performance made by the athletes. And here, looking at a space station, it's the same in all seasons. But here, I would like to echo the ice and the snow. So here, I would like to show you it's very easy to do this, and you also can get in your daily life, and you just get the a acid a stirrup or the white vinegar plus the baking soda, and you can get this solution. And this is what we call super saturated solution, and that's the sodium acetate. Let me squirt a ball of solution. All right. It seems like already crystallized. It doesn't matter. Let me change to our plan B. It's another bag of this super saturated solution. Let me try again. So let's squirt a ball of fluid. It seems like that the straw or the opening of the straw is already saturated. Let's do it again. Let me squirt another ball. All right, here we go. We got a ball, and let me get this. Let's see this. 
Can you see this? It start to change, right? Right now is the crystallization of these super saturated liquid. It seems like the ice ball. Do you know the reason behind? Why? That because that's the a very high the solubility of the solution in water. So when we have the a little material to change, that's the metastable status, and then it will be very soon become this crystallization status. And also we will see that exothermic situation. So that's why I also can feel a little bit heat from it. So it can also be a heated ball. And of course, you do this in on the ground should be in a container, but here you see there is no container. That's see why we can flow it everywhere. So when it's crystallized, then it's like this. So in microgravity environment, we know very well about that, the a surface tension and we can get a very crystal clear ball of water. Let me give you another experiment to show you more experiments about that surface tension. Let's see what we have. We have a two transparent board and Mr. Ye have a bottle of drinking water and also I believe our students in the classroom also have the a similar the tools right on the table so let's do it together so first let's squirt two balls of water on these two board or these two pad all right Let's move these two balls facing each other. And at the very beginning, they're not really friendly each other. And right now you could see they get along with each other. And let's see what happens. If we move a little bit, you could see that because of surface tension driven the phenomena, Actually, these two balls of water connected like a bridge connecting from one side to the other side. So on Earth, the surface tension is a very subtle force. So sometimes this is really difficult to do on Earth. But in space, you could see this is comparatively very easy to do so. All right, that's the liquid bridge. And then we have to think about whether we can have a elongated or longer one, a longer liquid bridge. So this is the question to you. If you have the answers, email back to us. Of, you could see and tell there is a huge difference between the Earth and the space. And also last time, uh, students also have a quite a big interest in the buoyancy experiments. And this time, let me show you more experiments to talk about weightlessness. Take a look. So in the bottle, actually, I feel like two types of what uh, liquid. One is the uh, drinking water and also the oil. Actually, the density of water is heavier than the oil. So on the ground, on the earth, so if you mix these two liquid together, and then the oil will flow above the water. Please join me and mix these two liquids to see what happened, to see whether there are any differences for the mix of the water and oil. Just shake the bottle and mix these two liquids. I can see 
Oil and water are separated on the ground, but in the space station, it's quite different. The water is still mixed with the oil. For you guys, you will see there's a complete separation of the water and the oil. But in the space station, now you can see these two are still together. Now I would like to ask a question. What should I do to separate the water and the oil? Please raise your hand if you have any ideas. Good afternoon, Ms. Wang. So before the lecture, actually, uh, we just had some experiment with our teachers here. So at the beginning, we are trying to shake the bottle, and then we could see the water will, sen will create sentiment. So maybe you could shake the bottle in order to separate the water and oil. Thank you for your answer. Well said. Yes, indeed, even though we are in the microgravity environment, we are not able to separate the water and oil. However, the properties of the water well did not change. As we all know that the density of the water and the oil is different, maybe we would like to use the centrifugal force to separate these two liquids. So now I will serve as the centrifugal machine. Now we are trying to rotate this bottle. So I would like to ask the, if we want to rotate this faster, maybe we need stronger force to rotate the bottle. Now you can see right now Mr. Ye is shaking and rotating the bottle as the density of the water is actually higher than the oil. So with the rotation, I believe there will be a separation of the water and the oil. Please take a look. Now we are able to separate the water and oil with fast rotation. Actually, in the space station, we do have some centrifugal machine. So in some of the experimental cabin, we do have the centrifugal machine. So we will collect um, some of the uh, samples and also to make a separation, for example, the blood samples, urine samples. So actually, for some of the uh, high-tech equipments, they are using very simple laws to conduct the experiment. Just now we have demonstrated three experiments. I believe you are understanding more about the liquids in the space station. So actually in the microgravity environment, it gave us a lot of opportunities to learn more about the physics and more laws. Now I would like to uh, verify another law, the Newton force first law. Please take a look. What is that? So this very popular bing dun dun. So here I would like to drop bing dun dun. Let's see what happened. Actually on the ground, in the earth, if I let my hands go and then it will fall. But what happened in the space? Now, I would like to throw Bing Dun Dun. So you can see it did not fall. It conduct a linear motion. All right. I would like to throw it back. 
So actually, once again, it is doing the linear motion at a constant speed. So actually, this is not in line with the first law of Newton. So right now, the um, space station is rotating around the Earth. So from your perspective, do you think Bing Dun Dun is still doing the linear motion? This is your homework. So just now I have demonstrated a lot of experiments. I think it looks quite different when we conduct these experiments in the microgravity environment. So the reason we built the space station is because we want to make good use of the environment and conduct more scientific research. So maybe you want to know how scientists work in such a condition. So Mr. Ye will show you more about this. Good afternoon, dear students. So in the core module at the front end, we have a laboratory section in order to conduct scientific research in space. Some of the scientists and the experts, they actually build up the laboratory in space. Last time in our class, I show you some of the experiments to understand some of the um, cardio movements. So here I would like to show you two more equipment. So this is the high microgravity cabin. So in this place, it will provide an even stronger microgravity environment. I believe uh, all of you are quite curious because in the space station it is already in the microgravity environment. Why we want to do this another cabin to fulfill the needs of high microgravity environments? Actually, for the high microgravity environment, it is very important for us to do some research in physics. It is more precise for our research. For example, we could analyze some of the cold antons, and also we can conduct a lot of high precision experiments. So all of these are basic research in physics. So you may be curious that even though this is quite useful, how we build this high microgravity cabin. So right now, I would like to invite Ms. Wang to open the door of the cabin so you can learn more about this apparatus. So here we have a operation platform. Now I would like to open this door. So this is the operation platform. So you could actually do the experiment inside of the cabin or outside of the cabin. So we have two layers. In the outer layer, we are able to conduct some of the suspension experiments by having the Magnetic suspension, it could actually reduce the resistance in the air. This will help us to improve the level of the microgravity in the cabin. In the past, we actually done a lot of the magnetic suspension experiments with the scientists on the Earth. Please take a look. The experiment started. So now you could see I removed this operation platform from the cabin. In accordance with the ground control center, I tried to stabilize this operation platform. Now let's see what happened. Uh, 
。哎，同学们看到了吗？这个实验台虽然受到我的干扰，但是呢， so, 它还是能够有痕迹，啊，逐渐的回到了原位。This um operation is interrupted by my movement, but still it could still work. But you may wonder why this experimental cabin knows where to go. In the door, you could see there is a matrix. So this is actually a benchmark for this operation platform. And behind the door, also it has like two cameras. So for all of these devices, it will help to locate this experimental cabin. Even though I moved the cabin a little bit, but for all of these equipment, it could actually identified the location for the cabin and then to make adjustments so that the cabin can move back to where it was. So for this double layer that is suspension machine, it will help the scientists to do more research. Speaking of the suspension technology, actually we have another device. So this is another experimental cabin. This is what we call the container-free experiment. Cabin. These are the key parts. So in this area, we are able to put some of these samples in the microgravity environment. So because of these um, technology, some of the key parts are able to suspend in this microgravity environment. And it will not heat the surface of the exper experiment cabin. So just now, Ms. Wang has done some of the experiment about the crystallization in space. Yes, indeed. We take this key advantage of the a microgravity in space to achieve this container-free situation. And also, we have conducted the basic research in these many cabinets, and also has conducted in this a very small, tiny equipment. Look at this video clip. So this is the experiment. You could see that a very little ball. First, we got the ball out. So you could see. That right now is under the uh, suspension control, and we right now heated the ball. Let's see what's going to change. So right now it's heated to 2,000 degrees Celsius, and so can conduct the, a many different measurement of a physical harm, the a numbers, and we could see. Right now, we cool it down. So you could see that there is a quite blinging happened during the cooling system. So if you are interested, you could check why that situation happened. And then we will bring all these experiments and results back to the ground for scientists to conduct following up experiments. Last September, Shenzhou 12 crews already brought the first round of the result of the experiment back to the ground, already now give, given to the a scientist. So we're waiting for more outcomes from the scientist. Experiments play a key role to making contributions to the progress of science, and here the space is one of the key locations to conduct all these experiments. After we received the Wen Tian and the Meng Tian experimental 
ships will conduct more experiments. I believe later on, the Chinese and Western astronauts can conduct more experiments here, and we hope that we can bring the benefits to all human beings around the world. And for all the students here, I'm also waiting for you to have your ideas about the next experiments in space. And maybe next time you will see your idea will be carried out here as a one of the experiments in space. So waiting for you, think big, push the boundary. All right, that's the most of the lectures. And then we come to the Q&A session. Uh, before that, Let's first look at some of the questions we received online, because after the first lecture, we received so many questions online, and we received all these questions by the Earth ground email system, and we select some of the questions, and here, let's try to answer them. So one question is, if you feel like the tears, so what's the shape of the tear? It's a drop of water or a stream of water. So what happened to your tears? It's a very interesting question, actually. We had a lot of exciting moments, and also we have and tears, but unfortunately, that's not really coming out. So it's not really coming out of our eyes as at the corner of the eye. I believe this is really hard to do on the ground, but it's very easy to do in space. We can hold our tears. So another question is whether your skin can be improved. I believe that's a very good question, maybe from a lady. So that's a beauty question. And because there is no a sunshine and also the humidity and temperature is also constant. And we talk about under the a microgravity situation, our body fluid also going up to our head and also our skin also coming to my head as well. So for myself, I think that my skin is getting better. And we also have the a different beauty products prepared by our ground staff. So we can have our basic daily routine. But for toner, of course, you cannot pull it out. We have the a different the equipment to squirt the toner out. And maybe let's give opportunity to ask questions from Beijing first. So, hello to three lecturers. I'm very interested in the container free cabinet. I believe it's really amazing. I would like to know what kind of materials can be conducted inside to do the experiments and what kind of the role all these experiments play. Maybe I invite Mr. Ye to answer your question. That's a very good one. We talk about containerless cabinet, which means there is no touch or contamination happened to the material. And we also do not need to worry about that the stratification caused by gravity. So we can produce the a new materials or the a new turbine plate. 
I believe we also can have that the material produced here to learn more about the heating system in the early solar system. Another question from Beijing. Thank you very much. Earth and I to Tiangong to be orbiting the Earth in 90 minutes. So what's the time setting here? So you follow the baiting time or GMT time. So what's your daily routine? Thank you. And maybe I invite Mr. Dai to answer your question. All right, here at the CSS, yes, we orbit the Earth in every 90 minutes, which means in every 90 minutes, we see one time sunset and one time sunrise. Inside the space station, we have a baiting time, we also have a world time. We also have a comparative flying time and also absolute flying time. Based on different missions, we follow different clock. Normally, I say if we have Taikonauts station inside the CSS, then we follow Beijing clock. So which means right now our daily routine is follow the Beijing time. Thank you for your question. All right, now I would like to invite students from Tibet to ask the question. Please raise the question to our astronauts. Good afternoon. Actually, I always like to observe the lunar service. So I would like to understand when you are staying in the space station, what's the difference of the moon? Does that look different? Any change of the service of the lunar? And also, I understand that the um, operation speed of the uh, space station is very fast. It will rotate about the Earth about 16 circles. So still, I want to understand, in your eyes, what's the difference of the moon? I would like to answer your question. So for the space station, it has a 400 kilometers away from the Earth. And however, for the Earth of the moon, it's quite distant, it's over uh, 380,000 kilometers. And also this is the same different uh, distance from the space station and the moon. So from our perspective, the moon looks pretty much the same as we are in the Earth. But if we are looking at the moon from the space station, as we will not be influenced by the cloud and atmospheric layers. So if we look at the moon from the space station, the moon is more brighter and clear. Thank you for your question. Any questions from Tibet? Any more questions to ask the astronauts? Good afternoon. So in Lhasa, we have uh, at the elevation of uh, 3,650 meters. So actually, the boiling point is actually lower. As we all know that if the altitude is too high, and then the freezing point will be low. So I would like to understand, are we able to boil the water in the space station? Are you able to drink the boiling water in the space station? Thank you. I would like to answer your question. Very good question. When we talk about the boiling water, it's actually the water at the um, temperature of 100 Celsius degree. 
Actually, in Lhasa, we understand because of the altitude, so the boiling point will be reduced. But actually, inside of the um, cabin, because we are in the microgravity environment, we are not able to boil the water. So in general, the temperature is lower, and in on the Earth, it is easy to boil the water, but in the microgravity environment, we don't have the buoyancy, uh, we are not able to boil up the water, because um, we don't have the uh, impact of the convection, it is not easy to boil the water. So for all the water we drink, actually it is uh, processed by special equipment. We could drink this water directly, or we could use the heating machine to heat up the water, but in the end, the water cannot be boiled. Now I'd like to turn to the classroom in Xinjiang. Any questions? Any questions to ask the astronauts? Good afternoon. So just now, I saw the experiment, especially some of the experimental cabin. I think this is quite uh, unique. I would like to understand whether some of the objects can be sent to the space to do the experiment. So I believe you are quite interesting in the biological studies. I think biological studies are very important for us. So actually, in the Wentian laboratory, actually we do have a lab to have some studies about the fruit fly. And of course, we welcome all of your ideas. For the fruit fly, it is commonly seen in the research. So we could use all of these creatures to do some biological studies. And in the future, we do have plan to bring some of the fruit flies into the laboratory in the space. Actually, you think light with the scientist. Any more questions from Xinjiang? Good afternoon. My question is, so when the space station is working, does that have been impact by the uh, resistance? Will it maintain at a constant speed? Thank you. All right, I will take your question. Yes, we may be impacted uh, by the resistance force, and we do need some power. Even though we are quite high, however, we still will run into some resistance, so this will actually have some uh, impact for our speed. In order to keep ourselves in the um, orbit, we need to have some power to propel the space station. Now I would like to turn back to the classroom in Beijing for more questions. Good afternoon. In the space station, I believe the environment is completely different because it is microgravity. And also, I believe there is a high radiation. I would like to understand what experiments have been done in the space station. So, as we know that it is quite advanced for the space station, can we operate some of the operations 
and the experiments and then we can receive the results on the ground. So I would like to invite Mr. Ye to answer your question. So just now we have demonstrated some of the experiments cabin and in the space station by using the special environment. We conduct many other research, for example, in medical service, mental, dis mental disease, and also we are also doing some of the uh, research into the traditional Chinese medicine. So by doing all of this research, we could better understand uh, what happens to human beings. And actually, we're quite busy every day in conducting different experiments. And except for doing the experiments, we also need to have routine inspections and the maintenance for the space station. As for your last question, I think right now it's quite convenient for the dialogue between the space and the ground. So when we are conducting the experiments, we're able to work with the scientists on the Earth. We are able to send out some of the results back to the Earth. One more question. Hello to lectures in space. Um, I want to become a scientist. Previously, I only know the scientists need to do experiments on the ground. But right now, surprisingly, I know that the scientists also can do experiments in space. Then my question is that, do you think I have the possibility to become a scientist to do experiments in space? I believe that's a really good dream. So, sums up for you. So, the purpose of establishing China's space station is to conduct a whole bunch of experiments, and we talk about the OD experiments actually open to OD scientists and astronauts around the world and also welcome more astronauts and scientists to conduct their experiments in space here in China's space station. I also welcome our students in the future to do the experiments by yourself in space, but right now you also can give us your idea and also you can do a remote operation of your experiments. So right now, your job is to work out, have a strong body, and also to learn more, and believe anything is possible. I believe our students do have more questions, but unfortunately, that's the end of today's class. And thank you very much for our three lectures, and waiting for you coming back home with a triumph. Thank you, the students. And thank you, the faculty. And Wintian and Mengtian this year will also be launched. I believe I have an even stronger capability to conduct scientific experiments. And please stay tuned. We will have more classes from this space. You hold your future, folks. So to unveil the mystery of space, to make China also the, a strong country, a strong power in aerospace, and a place to study harder and to achieve your dream with unremitting efforts. So flying to the space is always our dream, and we never give up exploring science. So keep up, and also to study more science, and there are a lot of things waiting for you to explore, and here is your future home in space. See you next time. Bye for now. Thank you very much for our three taekwondos for giving us a very great lecture. I believe today we have seen a lot of the spectacular phenomena from the space, and we also know the role played by CSS 
to give a further support and contribution to China's scientific development. And right now you're looking at it here in this venue in Beijing, and that's also the, a simulation of the ACAP experiment, the cabinet. So this is you could consider as the a scientific ward or the a scientific room. So inside this room, as you could find the a multi-discipline experiment carrying out here, and this is the a cabinet, so it's the a module-based construction. So you can change the a experiment unit, can change experiment samples to conduct different subjects of experiments. Don't think this is just a simple box. Actually, you know what? This cost 10 years to develop this space-specific experiment cabin cabinet. And when Tianhe, Wentian, and Mengtian all connected together, then we will have more than 10 this kind of cabinets to conduct more than 1,000 experiments covering 100 more fields. So it sounds really amazing. I believe with cutting edge technologies, we will see a fruitful achievement. And let's look, look at a video clip to dream the tomorrow. So this is the A2 cabinet for the A life science experiments and also for the other three, this is for the microgravity fluid and the a hydrodynamics. And also we have seen the cabinet for the space material science. And we also have the A2 cabinets for basic basics in microgravity. And we also have other supporting cabinets to carry out different kinds of experiments. The OD's cabinet is located in three sections, in the core module and also the two laboratory cabinets. With generations of generations of people working in the space industry, right now we are building a China space station. As the a current Mr. Zhou, the a chief designer of the a CSS, we talk about the way not to stop our strat to the lower orbit CSS. We want to send the Chinese people to Mars to moon and to leading the exploration. We believe we shoulder more responsibility and toward a shared future together. Time flies. And it's time to say goodbye. Of course, we will have more interesting classes. I'm waiting for you to join us and see you next time. You're watching a...